Hello. Hey, you guys. What are you guys doing? Thanks for uh, thanks for joining us on this uh, Saturday evening. And we're, you know, we always look forward to this. We look forward to spending time with you guys. So yep. thanks for coming to our living room. <laughs> so good to see everybody. It's good to see all the people that are coming in off of all the different uh, social media sites. I know. You can see we're drinking our Petite Syrah and pretty good for a girl, Rosé, Viva La Rock Petite Syrah, but we will kind of introduce a little bit about that later. Yeah. Uh, so tell us what you're drinking. Uh, some of you are drinking this. I know you yeah. are, but uh, I see so many of you guys, Cece and hey, Carrie, yeah. and what's up, Marilyn? I see so many of you guys coming in, Laura. So thank you guys for joining us, drinking the some wine and uh, playing some music. And today's special. I just, you know, I've got a few cool friends in the world. You guys are some of them, but I got some that maybe you don't know. And so we have a very special guest coming in today. Uh, she's an amazing jewelry designer. I love her jewelry and uh, I just think she's the coolest. So, you know, if you could spend a Saturday evening playing some music, drinking some wine, uh, talking jewelry uh, with a cool designer. I mean, it seems pretty perfect, right? Oh yeah, no, her, <laughs> her her stuff is amazing. Well, the jewelry part for me, you know, I got a little bit of this and that, but, uh, yeah. but you got the rock and roll jewelry on. So I got more of the wine jewelry. It's wine country stuff. She makes you know? men's stuff too, don't you even know? Absolutely, you absolutely. Oh, I know it's my birthday next week. It's it my is? birthday next week, everybody. So, uh, right you know, yeah, I'm a... Uh, Size 33, and I love champagne. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't help me with jewelry. All right, champagne. I get it. All right. Uh, so um, one thing I should mention is that I, you'll see me look down once in a while. We're using the laptop here, and I am the technical administrator as well. So, uh, so He's as, running the show. As you're chit-chat with Mindy, I'm uh, seeing all the comments. So please tell us what you're drinking. Please uh, type it in. Someone just came in with uh, Pinot Grigio, I just saw. Mark's drank a Chardonnay. 
Mark's drinking Chardonnay, nice. Boston. Yeah, here you go. Boston, yeah. drinking Pinot Grigio, Pam. So I'm um, mad at that. So as Mindy's entertaining you guys, I'm going to be administering the show, and hopefully it'll go fine. Uh, well, if not, I can only blame myself. You did spray champagne all over me the other day, and that <laughs> was crazy. So you never know what's going to happen. All right. So uh, uh, you're going to call me out on that. Let's I check this out. So go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. You know, wait, wait, wait. Let me see if I can find it real quick. So everybody give me one second. Oops. Wait, that's not. No, that's what the is, wrong button. <laughs> see, already. I don't, know. I don't know if this is going to go all right here. <laughs> I think I'm fired already. Wait, wait. I got How it. How much have you been drinking? I Woo! don't have that much. There's the picture right there. Oh, yeah. There it is. There it is. I got it. Right Our there. porch will never be the same. Oh, this my God. This is what a wine expert does to his wife. <laughs> Squirt champagne all over. So we're going to try it again this week. So anyway, let's let's move on with the show. Yeah. I have black on. Yes. You know, so nothing's going to stay in this. It's all fine. Um, <laughs> spray away. Okay. So Tuesday, um, next Tuesday, I'm doing uh, in the backyard again with Peter White. And um, I know you guys have come in for the last couple of weeks with me and Peter, and it's just been so fun. There, there just seems to be these endless possibilities of music with Peter. And so every time, uh, every time we do the backyard now, we look at each other afterwards and we have a little dinner and we just say, oh, what about this song? What about that song? And, you know, we just go through the whole list of songs we love to play together and songs that maybe we haven't played together like last week, uh, two weeks ago now, we did Bad Company. And uh, so this week we got some cool surprises for you. Some you know, um, some you've never heard us play. And so we're, we're, uh, we're just having fun, you know, yep. playing, playing music uh, with each other and keeping each other um, you know, going through this pandemic. Well, and uh, um, we got another English sparkling wine. So uh, for those of you who saw the last show and, and you know, the bottle exploded uh, all over me. <laughs> I'm going to redeem myself. We got another English uh, sparkling wine that we're going to taste. And this time, maybe Peter will get some because not all of it will be spray sprayed all over the house. And Mindy, so. Yeah, yeah. You're going to sit like <laughs> Peter and go through the wine tasting for that one. Yeah. Um, but we've also you know what, we've all been shelter in place for so long. And I know, you know, some of us got let out of our cage and then got put back in our cage because, you know, things aren't going well out there. So I hope you guys are being safe. But we um, decided to create a couple adventures for next year with the optimism that this is going to be, we're all going to be in a better place. Right. So we're going to go to Sonoma, which Eric lived there for uh, 15 plus years when we met um, we were, uh, well, you were living in Healdsburg and in it was Healdsburg, like yep. this perfect, perfect little town. Every restaurant is amazing. Here's some pictures um, I'm showing everybody on the screen right now. It's Northern Sonoma. If you've never been there, it is really considered one of the greatest places to live in the world. These are real pictures of wineries, Mindy playing, of course, the four star luxury hotel in downtown Healdsburg. This is a single thread to the right there. It's a three star Michelin hotel. So this is going to be Michelin restaurant, Michelin restaurant. Sorry. Um, and uh, this is going to be like the greatest trip ever. It's like going home for me. Yeah. He's pulling favors from all his friends and winemaker pals and yep. all that stuff. It's going to be an amazing, amazing week. So Just hang with us and drink wine and, and eat the, probably the greatest food in the world. Second only to Tuscany. So yeah, Tuscany will be next fall. And uh, already um, one of my girlfriends is playing in Italy this weekend, Lucy Woodward. Oh, wow. And she posted on Instagram. She's like, oh my God, you know, they're opening up the country to uh, yeah. music and stuff like that. So they're a little before us. So I'm excited. So this is a picture. Yeah, and this is a picture of the hotel. This is the best hotel okay. in basically all Tuscany, right in the middle yeah. of Siena is where we're going to be the whole time. So if you want to come and hang with us there, um, you can go to, and I'll show you guys here, to our reservetastings.com slash adventures. And you don't even have to sign up. You can just uh, get updates if you're not sure how the world's going to unfold over the next six months. We'll sound out updates. And if you think that uh, you feel comfortable about going at some point, then you can sign up and uh, away we go. So I think it's fun. I want to go tomorrow. I know yes. we can't, but no, I want to go tomorrow. No. <laughs> We're sitting here in our house and... Uh, you have to play music for the nice people. I don't have to play music, but yeah, I want to play music. Oh, that's a good point. Okay, so check it out. We, uh, we've we got 
such a cool guest. And it's just fun to introduce you to some of my friends that you don't know. You know my musical friends, you know most every one of them, but you don't know that I've got some really cool uh, friends in fashion and art, and I love them so much. So uh, this particular friend, Shannon, she's got amazing woman power. So she is, she's so strong and she, she conveys that strength uh, through her jewelry. And I always feel cooler. I always feel uh, kind of empowered when I'm wearing her jewelry. There's a lot of symbolism and a lot of uh, cool, um, you know, cool ancient symbolism and stuff in yeah. her jewelry. Yeah. So um, I'm well, going to play I'm, you a song hold, for her. And we're going to try something new. Hold it up to the other camera. What? what? <laughs> oh, it worked. Yay. What? <laughs> this is her ring that says fortune favors the bold. By the way, the ring's how really cool. cool. Is that? The wine guy figured out how to use two cameras. Whoa. That's super cool. And <laughs> one day I'll be able to get my nails done, but until now it's quite natural. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to play a song in honor of Shannon being with us today, and uh, we'll bring her in in a second. But this is a song from... Oh, well, I'm getting my saxophone. I'm going to put you on the other camera. Uh, ready? Yeah. Go uh, to, this do, is a song... Do Cam 2. Cam 2. Cam 2. This is crazy. Cam 2. We've never had Cam too. Hi, Cam too. <laughs> um, this is a song from uh, the record, the East West Sessions that I did with the Bone Shakers, Randy Jacobs, and Third Richardson, and Ron Lee, and Ben White. And, uh, so it this is a song about woman power, and you know about someone coming up after a show and saying, "Hey, that's that's pretty good for a girl." So I had to poke fun at that, um, but. Shannon, she's pretty good for a girl. <laughs> Are you drinking out of the bottle? No. He's drinking out of the bottle. Nope, I'm gonna take can't see that on sure. camera too. <laughs> I can see it from here. <laughs> All right, you ready? I'm ready. sugar and spice but my daddy said I didn't have to play nice he said it's not about can't or can and I'm not trying to play just like a man <laughs> And if there's one thing that I know I'm pretty tired of hearing, that's pretty good for a girl. right at me. She's not playing, no she couldn't be. <laughs> and I respectfully disagree. I've got education. What'd you get? Appreciation. What'd you get? Imagination. I even got a nomination. Two of them. And I'm getting busy taking over <laughs> the world. But then someone else said. Yeah, that's pretty good for a girl.
back to this good cam. Girl. Nice job, sweetie. Yeah. That was awesome. Here, I'm going to bring you back to this cam. We got a little picture of a pretty good for a girl wine up there. That's right. That's oh, right. My little microphone. Yep. That's what they used to set up when we had gigs. <laughs> <laughs> now it's me. Now so. it's it's you guys and uh, and me in our living room, which is great. And we get wine, too. Yep. I have never been able to drink this much on stage. Nope. <laughs> uh, we forgot to do one thing and then we'll uh we'll have our guest in let's uh one thing we didn't do oh was, my gosh i know we forgot the <gasps> cheers oh what know, all right so you guys everybody cheers out there chin chin cheers asante skull what? asante oh That's okay right. i'm learning different ways to say cheers right i'm 12 percent french okay that's what we ancestry that. said yeah. yeah cheers everybody <laughs> cheers all right, so let's move on to the most exciting part. I well, I think it's pretty exciting. So, I think so too. Okay, so my girlfriend is a really cool jewelry designer, and um, I've got to say, she has made jewelry for everyone. Um, you know, a bunch of cool celebrities. She'll tell you, but I happen to know Steven Tyler from Aerosmith wears a ton of her jewelry all the time. Um, and I've got a bunch of pieces too. I, I just think she's, uh, she's the coolest. Um, but I gotta read you, um, I looked up her bio cause you know, you, you kind of know people but then you read their bio and some things totally hit home. So she's got such a style, but check and, this out. And while you're doing this, I'll share some pictures for everybody so they can see. Okay, okay. yeah. So part of her bio, just a little sentence here, artisanal Gothic Anthropology is the best way to describe her provocative interpretation of ancient symbolism and nouveau art. She breathes new life into forgotten relics and iconography, enriching them with precious metals and gemstones. So how cool is that? Um, so I think uh, she's just a really cool person. Uh, I actually reached out because I loved her jewelry and I thought she was just a really artistic um, amazing woman. And I invited her to my show in Seattle and I was like, I'll give you tickets. Would you want to come down? And I had a couple of friends who knew her, uh, through fashion and she did. And I just think she's the coolest. So introducing Shannon Kozik all the way from Seattle. All right. <laughs> Hi Shannon. Hi. Thanks for having hey. me. We got a cheers to you. Pretty good yeah. for a girl. Everybody Absolutely. Say, Shannon, Absolutely. Cheers. Ooh. Cheers. Great. To be here with you guys i appreciate the invite I, I met mindy like she said i think it was about six months ago and i went to see her show and she had me with the saxophone but then the pretty good for a girl i was like okay i'm just in um and and she had reached out to me like she had said about the jewelry it's i thought was really cool that we connected through something you know that i do and something that she does and so immediately we obviously took to each other and um she had asked me for some jewelry for a photo shoot and then I got the picture from the photo shoot and I was like, okay, this is so my girl. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm in. So um, I'm just here to talk about the jewelry and sort of where it, all, everything comes from and how I got started. Um, I started making jewelry because I couldn't find what I wanted. Uh, everything was either way out of my price range or was too, I don't know, I'm a girl, but I'm not that girl. Um, and I wanted something that spoke to who I was. Um, but I don't like the really, really gothic, heavy-handed gothic jewelry. It's a little too like obvious. I wanted something that danced along the edge that was more trend. Um, anyone could wear. Like I have my customer base is literally 18 to 80. So I wanted, which is like the biggest compliment ever, because I wanted everybody to be able to wear it. And and most of my customers are are like Mindy. Most of my customers are very self-confident and our uh, artists themselves. And a lot of the feedback that I get from my customers is I feel stronger. I feel more protected when I'm wearing your pieces. And that to me is like the best compliment ever. And um, we've done a lot of market research and what we found is some women dress for women, some women dress for men. My women dress for themselves. And I think that's really cool. And I want to help uh, empower anyone who's having a bad day or feels like up against it. And I just, I can't leave the house now without this ring on in particular. I wear this one every single day. Um, and it says in Latin and English, fortune favors the bold. And Mindy's got it on. Mine has diamonds in it. Let's see. Oh, come on. The camera. <laughs> And then every piece I do that has diamonds is double-sided. So there's always diamonds on the inside as well. For me, that's sort of like French lingerie. You're the only one who knows it's there. And then 
It's not for anybody else but you. That's so, cool. Also, gemstones don't really activate unless they're touching your skin. So I always wanted everything, all the gemstones to be right on your skin. So I'm just going to talk about a couple pieces that are more of my like core pieces uh, and what the inspiration was and where they came from. I first yeah, I got a question before yeah. before you go into uh, certain pieces. Yeah, I love um, you know the the fortune favors the bold this this particular ring, but sure. that's kind of your I I want to say tagline, but I, I see that with you a bunch, and and it kind of is this overarching philosophy that I've seen with with your stuff and I think it's so strong and so cool can you talk about that well, I just feel like you know you don't get anywhere in life playing it safe you well people know this I mean to have the balls yeah. to go out and play a saxophone in a, that world that I mean you put your head on the chopping block every day that that's really putting yourself out there and I want to help people feel like they deserve to get what they want. They deserve to be who they're meant to be. And, and if they need a little push or a little help, that that's awesome. I mean, I get it from other places too. I mean, we all need help. So I think, you know, there's a lot of religious iconography in what I do. I don't do it for religious reasons. I do it for spiritual reasons. I do it for protection. I think we all need as much help as we can get. I've got Buddha, I got Jesus, I got Mary, I got them all. Um, and I think that it's about whatever it is that you relate to. I don't want to isolate anybody. I don't want to not involve somebody. I don't want it to become like a, you know, a secular. Uh, I really want it to be available for everybody. And, um, and, so far, so good. I'm like my cross section of customers. I love my customers. I'm really lucky. I don't have like a Barbie customer, which I would die. <laughs> um, and a lot of my customers say too, you know, I love the jewelry because it's not shiny. It doesn't look manufactured. It's something I can pass down to my grandkids. It's not trendy. And I really tried hard to, even though I work with some sort of, sometimes I work with trendy concepts. I try to make it look like it, you found it, like in your grandmother's chest. I don't want it to look like something that was produced. Um, I everything love that about your stuff. It's not. It's not like the shiny gold jewelry or the shiny silver jewelry. Like I always like stuff that's that's antiqued. Yes. And, uh, something that looks like it had a life before you. Yes. And I I always think that's cool. So there's not a lot of jewelry out there that's like that. That's handcrafted. That's you know. know. A lot of people are like your competition, and I'm like I don't think I have any. I just, I think I inadvertently created a genre that doesn't exist. So it's, I mean, there, there's a couple of us, but it's definitely everybody has their own bent. Um, but I wanted it to be, I don't know, like I said, something you you could have found in your grandmother's chest and been like, this is amazing. So a lot of the pieces I use um, are ancient or very, very old, or we some of the pieces like that fortune favorites, the bold ring, I just made this up and, and I found the quote late at night in college on a website somewhere and I kept it. So I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but this is so cool. Somebody has to do something with this. Um, and so when I started the jewelry line, I was like, well, this is a great sentiment. I mean, it's like, you know, I don't know. We all, like I said, we all need some help and, and we all have bad days. And, and um, I think that the universe shows up when you tell it what you want or you, you really put yourself out there. It doesn't do it if you're like, oh, I don't know, I'm scared. It's like, okay, bye next. <laughs> um, but I think that you really have to put yourself on the line in order to get what you want. And and sometimes that's lonely and it's scary and it's hard. And, and I think that all of um, my customers are like that. And I, I, I look, so want to celebrate them too. So it's really fun. It's fun to work with people too who, who get so excited about what I do. Like some women who are like, I have to have one in route all the time. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. So it's, it's fun. And I too, I order medals from Europe and I have a guy in, in France and when I get them, I don't know what's coming. And sometimes I'm, it's like Christmas. I'm like, oh, this is cool. Like have it's on. Eh. And then some of them are really cool. And then we take them and we alter them a little better. Or, um, and what I really do, I always say to people, I paint metal. That's what I do. Like the casting is all done using um, recycled metals. So all the sterling is 100% recycled. All the bronze is 100% recycled. Ah. It's all um, made in the Pacific Northwest. I hand oxidize and make every single piece. Yeah. So nothing goes out of the studio I haven't touched or fi finalized myself. Yeah. Um, that is one of my, my favorite pieces and that is a victory angel yeah. that Belgium commissioned after World War I. And on the back of the coin is the flags from all the countries that were victorious in World War I. How cool is that? Right? I just love, yeah, and I love her. I mean, like, who doesn't love an angel? I love her. <laughs> she like keeps me safe. Yeah, 
Thank yeah, you. Oh. she's awesome. And then I layer that one with this one a lot, which is um, an African sewing needle artifact. But I Hell think yeah. it looks really cool. Here it is with the angel thing. It's sort of like the feminine and tough thing. When you mix them together, you get this very ethereal angel, but then you get this sort of, you know, edgier. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Yep, she's got all three on. Oh, I got <laughs> I've got too much on. <laughs> I gotta Don't take that on strap out of it though. Yeah, there's you no know, that needle. Like I would never think about that, but it sure yeah. is cool. Yeah, I love that one. Yeah. And then they also did a series with lions. Um, and that one is similar to the Fortune Favors the Bold, except it's a lion and it says uh, Fortune Favors the Brave in Latin. Hold it, uh, hold it a little closer. Go ahead and just hold it right up to the camera. Even, That's so cool. Even closer, go ahead. I feel like I'm gonna go out of frame if I go. No, 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 no go, go ahead. Just I okay. Sorry, there. guys. I'm yeah, new. There you this. go. <laughs> oh, perfect. There you go. Yeah. Great. So, yeah, that thing's cool. He's really cool too. I love him. Yeah. And then, since everything that's been going on, uh, people have been asking me more for symbols of peace. So I made a peace sign out of the angel. Oh yeah, that's so cool. Put it a little closer so we can see the angel. There you go. Oh, awesome. There you go. Right That's there. awesome. Great. Sorry, this is. Yeah, it's no, okay. No, okay. Perfect. <laughs> it did really well. Thank you. And then this is the big, big, big Fortune Favors Gold bracelet that I love. Okay, I saw you post that the other day. I was like, whoa, check that out. Yeah, it's super cool. Yeah. It's definitely a statement piece, but I love this. It's actually really comfortable. And a lot of the metal warms when you wear it. So it, you get used to it and you don't even notice it's on. Like I can't even go to the grocery store without this ring on anymore. I feel naked. I'm like, I'm missing something. I can't focus. Um, and then I did a new series where for years people have been like, okay, well I have 15 of your necklaces. Can I just order the metals? And I was like, well, I don't know how to do that. So I came up with a modular collection so that each metal now comes on a ring. So you can also take the metals and put them on either your own necklaces or an existing necklace of mine. And you I can... think that the coolest thing I I do with your jewelry, I just layer it all. Like I've got one, yeah. I've got one two, three. Yeah, you just layer. Like, I, put all I wear them all. Like, and they're all different. You know, they're all different. I'm going to show you in this in this thing, but. You want me to go to the other cam? Yeah, go to the other cam. Oh, I can do that. <laughs> there you go. You got, you know, like the winged angel of victory, but then you've got this stuff. But I've got a sack strap that goes there, so that's right. got to take up room, right? You know what? We yeah. should probably uh, we should but, get uh, this kind of like um, see if we can put one of Shannon's piece on that. That's right. All right. But then, okay. like, you go down, and I always like stuff hanging. So hold she's it, got this way up to the camera. awesome, like you keep going down and it's this cool, there you know, you cool stringy vibe that just flows in the breeze when you're on stage, you know, back when we used to be on stage. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I love just wearing a bunch of pieces because they all go together. I've got- like, I always said there's no, there's no right or wrong. They're all meant to layer together. I love this one on the leather with the cross. Yeah, that's so, awesome. And it's got super long leather fringe on it. I think it just looks so cool because, you know, ev everyone wears necklaces like, you know, normal length, but you wear something like that and everyone uh, says something about it. You know, I think it makes a statement. Totally. And then I wanted to see something a little softer. So I, I did and I didn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted a version of Chanel pearls, but I didn't want them to be so traditional. So these are my version of Chanel pearls, but they have little skulls on them. Love. So I don't even think people notice the skulls, you know, unless they get up on you and then they're like, whoa, because the, the necklace that I have of yours on here, it's like yeah. black leather, but they're teeny little skulls. So I'm just like that much badass. Yeah. No, and <laughs> a lot of women say to me, they're like, I love that they have skulls on them because nobody knows their skulls but me. And then they get up close and they're like, oh, that's a skull. <laughs> you know? and yeah. So and talk about, I mean, I know that Steven Tyler, I was on the road with Aerosmith for uh, a summer and it was uh, incredibly memorable, but I know you make, jewelry for a bunch of famous people. Um, but will you speak about some of them and, and include Steven uh, in there? Sure, Steven is, you mean he's easy. He's like the easiest guy in the world to put in jewelry. I mean, look at him. <laughs> yeah, right? He's yeah, he loves guy. jewelry. He wears everybody's jewelry. Um, he's great. And, and I just think, you know, rock stars are a dying breed. 
I mean, we don't have a lot of rock stars left and it's the swagger. It's yeah. the, like, like Lenny Kravitz and, and Steven Tyler and these guys, they just ooze style. Like yeah. they're a walking piece of art, really. Um, so it's not hard to dress them. And then Steven, I actually make chandeliers as well. I don't have them up on the website right now because we just built a new website. Um, but I do one of a kind chandeliers and he has a very large piece of mine in his house. And to me, the chandeliers are just the oh, largest jewelry you can make. Oh, that's cool. I love your chandeliers. And uh, I mean, I think they are just, they're so cool because they're rock and roll, but they're beautiful. It doesn't look like overt, tacky rock and roll. It looks like yeah. expensive, awesome, almost antique, but not, you know, yeah. so I, I totally see. I like them to look broken. I want everything to look like it was pulled out of a house in New Orleans from like the 20s. Yeah. Um, but the the thing with the chandeliers is they take me like five days to make and they require scaffolding. It's not a little thing, but I love doing them because um, because it is like the largest piece of jewelry you can make. And I think that a lot of the stores that carry my jewelry are more traditional. I don't really sell to jewelry stores. I don't really sell to clothing stores. I sell to like interior design showrooms and to uh, wow. high-end gift shops that are really more traditional. And they, they always say to me, your stuff is edgy. It's like the edgiest thing we carry, but it's so beautifully done that it just doesn't read as edgy. And so I think for people who feel like I want a little edge and I want to feel a little dangerous, but I don't want it to be overt, right? Yeah. Um, and there are a lot of people say to me too, you know, I can't go anywhere without people comment on your jewelry. Like everybody comments on your, your pieces and they'll say, you're, once I found you, you're like the only jewelry I wear. So it's been really cool and really shocking. Um, the reaction and and um actually when i first started it was terrible and so you know you, you get better as you go and i i didn't think this would ever get to this place um so it's pretty exciting that it has and that people have reacted and 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 so i'm trying to do now like i was going to show you guys these i'm trying to do more for men so these are just all of the metals on a really simple chain oh great um hold it a little closer please just a little closer yeah. Those are so cool. There you go. Perfect. It's just like a traditional men's chain and I put them on a, a, a bronze loop so you can take them on or off or put two or three on. Hey, everybody that's on right now, please, you can ask questions to Shannon. You can ask uh, any questions you want. We could post them and I'll see them and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll push them to Shannon. So. <laughs> Rosemary's like, uh oh, Mindy's going to be buying some more jewelry soon. Watch <laughs> out, Eric. <laughs> no, he bought me this for my for my birthday. Uh, yes, he did. Ago. So, yeah. you know, it's not me doing the buying, but yeah, it's it's cool to have friends in high places. I just I love the fact that I can hang out with my creative friends. You know, it's like okay, I do music. I wish I could make jewelry or paint, um, you know, or do stuff like that. I can't, but. Shannon can. And I just think it's awesome to, you know, uh, hang out and, and uh, you inspire me. I mean, oh. not only your jewelry, but you and what you do and how you've created it and, and kind of had this vision. I just think it's cool. So oh, um, thank you. It's like, you know, we all, I wish I could sing. Like I always wanted to be a singer. I wanted to be on the road. You know, I think that's cool. So I think you inspire me. And I think that other, my other artist friends inspire me. Like I always said, when I see really good music, it, it for me, music is like air. Like without music, I would die. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so I said, well, if I can't be a rock star, I'd like to like dress them. <laughs> so it's the next second next best thing for me. And I always say, you know, I want my jewelry to be as good as the songs you write or, you know, how it, it's the same thing for me, you know, as it is for you. And then I do a small line of candles. Yeah. And I think these look really good together. Check them out. <laughs> oh, let me, let me, I uh, got one here. Yeah, so, and it's sandalwood. And by the way, our house smells amazing right now, doesn't yeah. it? It's awesome. Yeah, the sandalwood it's is raw and sandalwood. <laughs> <laughs> the tea and, and sandalwood, sandalwood in the afternoon. It's yeah, like, yeah. Well, I think candles are. Uh, uh, I think the government should give out like cheese, wine, and candles. <laughs> um, Shannon, there is someone asking about it. How do you find out about the chandeliers? Do you just go to your website? And yeah, I'm going to have a page up soon with the chandeliers on them. They, I don't right now. Um, they're on my Instagram, though. They're, they're in throughout my Instagram. And my Instagram is uh, Shannon J. Kozik. Um, and also, you guys were giving a 25% off to anybody who's watching this um, through Monday. And the code, yes. is, <laughs> the code is ROCK. Ampersand wine. So yep. 
scrolling yeah. at the bottom of the screen here. Oh, by love the way, that. someone just, uh, they said they love the candles, but um, here, there's probably one of the most important comments that just come up, if you guys could see that. <laughs> not, not to steer the attention away from you guys, but I, I just noticed that this comment came in. I'm just going to put it up, uh, hint, hint. Yes. Thanks, Rosemary. You know, you can't go shopping in normal stores, so I do know, <laughs> I do know people, you know. <laughs> those cool rings, though, too, the, the stackable kind of yeah. perfect-looking uh, cool. This one's been pretty popular. This is um, this is uh, Fortune Favors the Bold in Latin, and it's just cool. a simple band ring. That's um, really cool. It's some, yeah, a lot of guys wear this, too, and a lot yeah. of my unisex. There's a question here that says uh, from Linda, when are you coming back to Nashville? Yeah, I know. We're talking about a trunk show next year. But we were going to do it last year and then, you know, or this year. I think now I'm considering this year, last year. Okay. <laughs> this yeah. year doesn't exist. But Nashville, yeah, Nashville has is, is been good to me. I love Nashville. It's been good to us all. Oh, yes, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Some of the greatest music in the world there, definitely. I love that everything in Nashville comes back to music. Like every conversation is about music. Every conversation ends about music. Yep. I really liked Nashville. I it was what, I, what I thought yeah. about with Nashville is because I've actually uh, made wine for people who you know sell wine there, like a retailer in Nashville, um, like a wine shop. And you know, living up in Sonoma, Napa, when I went to Nashville, it reminded me of Sonoma, Napa because in wine country, everybody talks about wine and food. Everybody indulges in wine. It's everywhere. But when yeah. you go to Nashville, music is everywhere. And everybody, everything. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. So it, to me, Nashville was just like Sonoma. Yeah. Um, but I'd rather live in Sonoma. Well, yeah, I, I, I get the, <laughs> yeah, I get the Sonoma now the thing. But yeah. I do like peg leg, peg leg porkers in Nashville though. So the, <laughs> the ribs there are my home run. Oh yeah. So I think for me, Northern California is utopia. It is oh, my yeah. heaven on earth. It is oh, yeah. the most amazing place ever. So uh -huh. I agree with you. I'm from Santa Barbara, but I live in Seattle. I've been here 25 years. Good wine down in Santa Barbara too. Yeah. 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 It's just my husband's in tech. So we live in Seattle. And Seattle's so, fine too. Yeah. So, for, um, so everybody on the bottom there, we got the little scrolly thing that shows the show special 25% off. And I can promise you that is not something that happens very often with her jewelry. No. She, she, she makes incredible stuff, and to get a little special offer like that is very, very uh, unique and very special to us. So thank you for doing that. Of course. Um, we're going to have uh, a little music intermission, if that's cool with you. Yes. And we're going to put you in the green room, which is an okay. awesome place to be, apparently. You have wine, and you have all your jewelry. Yeah, and this wine is amazing. I love this. Yeah. And the, the label just, I mean. Pretty good for a girl, Rosé. It goes Rose. with you. It totally goes with you. <laughs> Um, and uh, that wine is sold out, but the next wine that we're going to feature here is Viva La Rock because nothing goes better with her jewelry also is Viva La Rock because it's exactly. all about rock and roll. This is a big monster Petite Syrah. We do have this one available in our wine company, hmm. and I already drank a couple glasses while you guys were chatting. I kind of reached across and grabbed them. Um, i got to take care of you. So we're going to go to... So Shannon, we're going to see you back for a little bit of wine tasting. Everybody is going to play a little song and then I'm going to come Drink back up. on. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, how to taste wine like a, like a sommelier. We'll do that pretty quickly, but I think you'll learn some things when we do that. But Shannon, we'd love to have you back when we do that. Yes, absolutely. I'll cool. Okay. Okay, now what music would, uh, I mean, obviously music that pairs with a big red wine. We right. made a whole playlist for this particular wine, but I have a song in mind. Anyone, anyone got, uh, anyone got songs? So anybody want to chime in on what music would go with a big, bold red wine? So there's some members on here. This is a 2016 Petite Syrah from Mendocino County. So um, before Mindy plays, uh, let's show you what Mendocino County looks like. It's crazy. It's, uh, it's out there. And what's the number one crop in Petite's, uh in Mendocino County, if anybody wants to um chime in about that sorry got a little distracted with the picture wine so momo bloom no, 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 no. yeah we need something a little bigger though those those I songs think bloom's pretty big Blo bloom's, bloom's pretty, pretty big. big it is very big mm -hmm. so i think that could work see this picture right here this is mendocino county you can see there's no ocean around it it's inland it's a valley it's northern california it gets pretty hot but I could tell you this, if you look off in the distance, you see a lot of marijuana growing over there. <laughs> <laughs> the number one crop in Mendocino County is cannabis. Number two is wine, and they make some great wine. So if you drink, 
Viva La Rock, you will get totally stoned. Now. And uh, so please, no. we only have 10 cases, so order. <laughs> no. Stay happy no. for this shelter in place. <laughs> As you're watching the news and getting more unhappy, drink. Drink. It'll make you happier. Drink. <laughs> okay. So, I anyway. Think, uh, well, I'm going to play. Uh, yes. And did you want uh, a little bit of bloom? I'll play you a little bit of bloom. Oh, you're going to do was, a little bloom? All yeah, right. but I, I got something else in mind, too. So, right. uh Oh, wait, I'm going to put you on the MIDI cam. Sorry. Oh, I got, sorry. I'm like, what? What? I'm putting you on MIDI cam. Okay. There you go. Now I'm not, uh, not going to play in. Yeah, I'm still going to play in your ear. It's MIDI cam. Hi. Hi, MIDI cam. Let me have that one. Okay, so now I get to request a song. Uh, Shannon made jewelry for, a lot of jewelry, uh, for Steven Tyler. He always wears um, big skull rings and stuff. And even though I was a part of Mindy A. Bear and the Bone Shakers for a while, I just wear the little skulls. But I mean, he's got these things that cover his whole finger and stuff. But she makes him a bunch of cool stuff. And obviously, I was on the road with them uh, uh, a few years ago now, but it was so fun. And um, I love those guys. And there was one song I did not play on, but I would get off the stage and watch. And I was enamored every night. It never got old watching them play this song. So I'm just going to play a little bit of it. But uh, this is Dream On by Aerosmith. And it's just, it was my favorite point in the night every night. You think you'd get, you know, tired of it night after night. No, it's just, Unbelievable. So a little dream on for you. <laughs> Thank you. 
love. Revenge for Shannon. Yeah. You like Aerosmith, huh? Yes, I do. <laughs> I like when my wife plays Aerosmith. <laughs> He's just sitting back drinking, yeah. having a good time. Chilling. He's like, Keep playing, hon. This is cool. All right, I'm going to come back to this camera. <laughs> Ooh, I got it right. What? And by the way, you notice how much wine has left the bottles here? Well, we, we started about an hour before you guys. So uh, Wait, I haven't hopefully been, you caught up to us. I haven't been drinking enough. No, but... I've been doing it for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I like you when you've had a couple of glasses of wine. That's good. <laughs> oh, stop it. Oh, There's God. guys out there. I can't do this. <laughs> your people. mom's watching. Oh, my gosh. My mom's your mom's watching. watching. Nick is watching from Arizona. He's a golf friend. <laughs> this is some guy stuff. I can't do this. It's not cool. <laughs> Come on. I just played Aerosmith. That was cool. That's cool. You play Springsteen, it's even cooler. Yeah, so, that you know. another week. <laughs> and we played a little Bloom, too. That was cool. Yeah, we did. All right. So, uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about this is a wine tasting as part of the tr jewelry trunk, sh trunk show. It's easy to say after all that wine, right? And uh, and the music show. So let's talk a little bit about wine because I'm sure that everybody wants to. My mom's watching the Yankee game right now. So I got to get my mom back to the New York Yankee. Hey, by the way, we should cheers once again. I'm going to cheers once again that all sports came back. We had golf yeah. on today. And tennis. tennis. Tennis is my favorite. We had uh, basketball and we had baseball on today. I'll drink to that. And cheers to that. Cheers to sports being back. Save our soul, right? Who's going to save my soul? The Yankees are going to save my soul. Well, we'll see about that. But, I don't know. You know. Sorry, Nick. Nick actually worked. I got the in Tampa baseball, Bay Rays. So yeah, it wasn't for the Yankees. All right. So, um, actually, everybody, it would be interesting to hear who your favorite sports teams in are. So come on in and uh, you know post them, and we'll we'll put them up while we talk about the next thing here. Did my Rays play today? Uh, I know they probably played somewhere. Venus Williams played today. Venus, Venus Williams played in the doubles today. Yep. Yeah. So tennis is back on and we will watch that tonight. Uh, oh, there's Ann. Of course, Ann, you're in Brooklyn. You got the Yankees. I know you do. You're like probably right down the street from them. So, uh, that's pretty cool. Should we bring uh, Shannon back in oh. for the wine tasting? Well, yeah, we're going to bring Shannon back in. But Lorraine made a good point because Mindy and I lived at the oh, beach yeah. for quite some time and uh, professional volleyball at LA is huge. And volleyball, beach volleyball is back as well. So thank goodness for that. Probably one of the coolest sports on the planet. So we're going to bring um, Shannon back in to do the wine tasting. Right on, baby. Hey, Shannon. Hey. You got wine? Yes, I do. I've right. got jewelry if you got wine. For good. There's <laughs> <laughs> <Finish> this. <laughs> All right, everybody. So uh, please chime in. Please ask questions. This is your opportunity to kind of stump me if you want and try to ask uh, your most darkest, deepest wine questions. Think about that. Think about me as your I'm your therapist of wine. Cork dork. Therapist. I'm your cork dork therapist. That sounds <laughs> really creepy. And it is. Well, Mindy and I will talk about that later off camera. <laughs> But uh, I um, I went to San Diego State. My mom's on right now, and uh, here's uh, a fun story. When I find, when oh, wow. I uh, when I left San Diego State, uh, I got my first job in wine at Kendall Jackson Wine Estates, and you guys know Kendall Jackson. Five million cases a year. We used to bottle thirty thousand cases in a day. So much wine, right? Almost as much as Mindy and I drink in a day in Hollywood. <laughs> and my mom said to me, Trying. "Well, that makes sense, Eric, because all you did at San Diego State was drink a lot. So at least you're going to be a professional at it. So we all have our callings in life, like Mindy and Shannon. So <laughs> this is my calling in life. So cheers. You found so, your happy place. Yes, and my mom <laughs> was happy because now she benefits from it. Well, yeah, now she gets wine in the mail. It's great. Right. So that's not terrible." <laughs> All right, so let's do this together, everybody. So we appreciate you being here for this really special kind of jewelry, music, and wine show. So let's do the wine portion. So we're going to we're gonna go through a very basic kind of four S's here. This is a basic element of how we taste wine in wine industry. So I've managed some of the biggest wineries in the world. And when I sit around with the winemakers, one, two, five winemakers, we, we actually do this every time. So what we do is there's four S's, sight, smell, sip, and then the savor. So the first thing you do is you look at sight. Now, I can say that master sommeliers can actually figure out what a wine is without even knowing. Let's say the bottle's somewhere else and it's put away. They can, before even tasting the wine, they're amazingly outstanding at just doing the sight and the smell and almost telling you exactly what the wine is, vintage, place, region, the whole thing. Wine speaks so much from the sight and smell. 
before the sip, we all go right to the sip. Pour me a glass of wine, and you saw me actually while Mindy was playing, and I start, you know, sipping it, right? That's the best part, let's be honest. But there's so much in the sight and smell. So let's talk about that. With sight, right now, I can tell you, now this is going to be expert advice, Shannon, that okay. this is a red wine. Right here, this is a red wine. And by the way, where Shannon lives up in Seattle, some of the greatest wine in the world in Washington and Oregon as well. And I say, I say yeah. that. It's tremendous up there. But this is, joking aside, this is a red wine, but you look at the color. And as I was asking for the jewelry to be pushed up, Shannon, would you say this is a, a light ruby or is it a dark ruby? It looks wine? darker to me. Dark. Not yeah. even ruby, maybe garnet. It is garnet. Dark. 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 Inky. Yeah, right? in jewelry terms, I think it's garnet because garnet. it totally looks, you garnet. know? Yeah. So let's call this dark garnet. So what, what that tells us right away that this is not some of the lighter reds, Chianti's, St. Sangiovese's, maybe even maybe even Nebbiolo, but it's definitely not Pinot Noir, not Rosés, not got all the whites. And so you're focusing on heavier reds. Now, everybody out there, you probably know the heavier reds, right? Syrah, Malbec, um, uh, Cabernet, Merlot, right? Those are the heavier reds, Petite Syrahs. So right now, anybody who knows a lot about wine or a little bit about wine, you know by just looking at this, that this is not uh, all those other wines. You nailed it down to maybe 10 or five different wines you can find in the store. So the legs, that's the next thing. So the legs in the wine, everybody, the legs actually tells you the viscosity or the density of the wine, which comes through alcohol. So if it has really pronounced legs on it, and I don't know if you can see this on the screen. She's got can't. legs. Can't. <laughs> <laughs> ZZ Top on. Actually, drink it, ah. and it tells you the alcohol level of the wine. So since this uh, this wine we know has a higher level of alcohol, so that actually nails some wines out of it. So what what has high alcohol? Zimmendels, Cabs, Merlots, and Petit Syrahs. It knocks out the Syrahs. It knocks out the Malbecs. It knocks out the Mouvedres, Sangiovese. So think about that already. We just looked at this wine. We didn't even smell it. And we already know that it could be one of maybe five major varietals in the world, just by looking at it, just by looking at it. So, um, Shannon, let's yeah. smell it together, okay? So I know that you have to know wine living in Washington. I love wine. Yes, you do. I know you love wine. Making that jewelry, that's got to be wine-fueled jewelry. I know. Yes. Um, actually, let me take a look at the comments here, too. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, uh, my mom's really ripping right now. Oh, and, and the wineries and, and uh, what, uh, let's see what mom says here. Oregon, yeah. Mom yeah. says, this is my mom. Wasn't surprised. Remember your great grandfather made his wine. He called it uh, cheesing. <laughs> yeah. So I'm an ancestor of the gallows, by the way. We'll talk about that another, another show. Cool. So up oh, some people here from Chile, some nice. of the greatest wines in the world. Cabernets, obviously from Chile. Amazing. Right. Uh, Bocelli is a great singer. How is the wine? Bocelli's wine is one of the highest rated wines in the world. He has which, his own wine? He has his own wine, and I don't remember the name of it, but he lives in Tuscany, which, you know, it's hard to make bad wine there, but he makes outstanding wine. And I would not say that about all of the celebrity wines. His wine is something that if you could find, you should definitely try. Okay. okay. That's cool. I didn't know that. Yep. Oh, well, we someone just ordered some jewelry from a. Uh Oh, nice. No, you just, uh, yeah. I, oh, I sorry. Just, let me see. Let me see. I just lost it, but someone was like, I just ordered some jewelry from oh, Shannon. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Yay. Uh, just so here you go. Mark. Thanks for the great uh, sound. Thanks, and Mark. Show. Thanks for supporting us. Thanks for supporting Shannon. That's really special. That's thank totally you. cool. Well, she makes thank it cool. You. Yeah, totally. That's awesome. That's power. All right. So, Shannon, in the wine right now, not to put you on the spot, let's smell it because we haven't even tasted it yet. So, let's smell right. it. Pressure's on. Pressure's on. And I know Petit Syrah has got a spe specific fruit characteristic about it, but is there anything that you, and there's no wrong answer, like what darker red fruits are you getting from this wine, do you think? Pressure. <laughs> Did you say fresh herb? <laughs> no, she said pressure. Oh, pressure. Oh, I know. Yeah, I'm putting you on the spot. I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> I was going to say fresh herb. I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll give you that. <laughs> it is Mendocino. I want to say like lavender. Is that wrong? Oh, very, yeah. very good. Excellent. Excellent. And by the way, that's a secondary smell. So what Shannon right. just went to was like deep. Rock so there's, star. there's dark cherry. There's dried cranberry on this. Absolutely dried fruit, like a dried, dried cherry. But if you go to that second level, man, you could actually get that 
had herbs in it, and that was that was lavender absolutely comes through. And the reason why, because per, uh, Petit Syrah is perfumey, and that's why um, right here, a master sommelier that you see on TV would guess Petit Syrah probably from California. Right I'm there. smelling sandalwood too. I'm smelling, I'm smelling sandalwood. Yeah, I love sandalwood. This smells amazing, and I love wine that tastes like cherries too. That's like that dark, dark cherry taste. Oh, yeah. it's amazing. Oh yeah, the dark cherry. I mean, you get a lot of dark cherry on this as well. It's like yeah. dense. It's, yes. it's not only cherry, it's like overt super cherry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nick said dark cherry and tobacco. And Nick, you're yes. 100% right. Yeah. Tobacco, <laughs> or it can come across as um, uh, saddlewood oil or- um, Saddlewood oil? That's Where right. You I, get I said it? that. <laughs> <laughs> It's like oil. Oil. Yeah, well, it's, it's tobacco. It's dried, dried tobacco leaves. <laughs> Listen, Nick and I know what the hell we're talking about. So, all right. I love anything that has tobacco in it. Yes, yes, we do too. And usually that has to do with a little bit of age on red wine. Sometimes the varietals will come out with that, but mostly that's about age. And 2016, which this wine was made four years ago, pre-Sonoma Mendocino fires, pre-pandemic, and this wine, this little grape was made back then, and you'll get a little tobacco or dried leaves on it um, at that point. Yeah, I'm going in for more. Oh, by the way, I'd like to get very political right now. Yeah, this is, um, the wine is outstanding. The wine is outstanding. So I'm going to- We're sharing. I'm going to, so everybody that's hung with us this whole time, thank you very much. We're going to get very political right now. Mindy's wondering what the hell I'm talking about. It's because I want to make a political platform statement right now. Uh -huh. We got people across the country. We got people, everybody coming in and ticking us out. So Mindy and I started our own party. There's the Bernie <laughs> party. There's the Republican party. There's the Democrat Party. There's right, right. everything, right? Tea Party. You got it all. We are starting. The what a music, music party. party, right? I'm down. I'm going all the way. Yeah, absolutely. Who okay. cannot do for that? And uh, I don't know who's going to run for office. I think everybody who drinks wine and listens to music. Yeah. So, uh, so by the way, please join us for our wine and music party. There's no way to join. <laughs> just, just join us with these tastings and the, and the music uh, shows on Tuesday nights with me. So, <laughs> so is anybody out there ready to be in the wine and music party, please? Well, we got Jerry who's ready to be in the wine party, but you gotta be in the wine and music party, right? So. <laughs> anyway, so thank you very much for going through the tasting with us. There's four S's. You look at it and you smell it, you taste it, and then you savor it, which is what goes on afterwards. But one of the things that um, is amazing about wine, as with jewelry, as with music, there's so many layers to it. It's not just about drinking it and loving it for with the food and the music, but look at it and smell it. And that will tell you so much about wine before you even get to drinking it. It is one of the greatest things in the world outside of um, my wife's music. So. You're so funny. Yeah. So thank you everybody for hanging with us on that. No, I I love I I wanna I wanna keep going on what you said because Dara? we had Shannon on here because Shannon is an amazing artist and I think you know so so much of what wine is is art. You know, it's not just someone growing grapes and putting them in a bottle. Yeah. There's so much art to it, and I forget that. And when I listen to you talk about it, it's uh, evident. And well, you know, I know music is art. I get sucked in and just you know I'm taken away with it, and that that's my life. But it it does remind me when you talk about wine and and well, wine different is aspects. life, right? It's life. It's like life in a bottle. Yeah. 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 <laughs> It takes yeah. as as your as your chandeliers do. It takes forever to get this petit sirah yeah. to someone who lives in Arizona or Texas, and it takes thousands of people that I've been able to work with. And if you think about wine country, everybody thinks you know big chateaus or wineries and wealthy people. No wealth can or or by the way, growers growers who are not wealthy that own little plots of land and have little wineries outside of you know the billionaires dot comers that come to wine country, no amount of money can have handled the fires that we had. The fires were over the top, decimated yeah. our friends' homes. And then you have another fire on top of it. And then you have the pandemic that people can't visit the wineries and the restaurants. It is yeah. unprecedented in Sonoma and Napa, Mendocino and California wine country right now to survive. I don't know how people are doing it. Um, my friends and I all work in the business and it is incredibly, incredibly trying times. But people keep buying wine online and mm. ship it to their homes. And that's what Mindy and I have loved about everybody here, that you feel comfortable sending it home 
and drinking it at home like Shannon yeah. is in her studio. So that's <laughs> really an excellent thing. So thank you, by the way. Thank you, everybody. What? Ty Stevens came in. What are you doing? He's, He's not drinking wine. He's not, but he's heckling you. I know. <laughs> what is what is one of your favorite wines from Washington? Do you drink Washington wine since you're there, or is it because you have it all the time? You drink other. No, I'm terrible. I drink a lot of Provence rosés. <laughs> I love, uh, but I do like Pinot Noir too. I went through a big Pinot Noir phase, and then I discovered rosé, and I was in. Yeah, like, I went to Paris three times last year for shows. Oh my goodness! And I, they brought just table wine, right? And then I have some friends, customers who have a store uh, up in Northern California. And they invited me to come to a trunk show and they took me to a rose winery. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like, I just, there's something about rose that just for me is, I love a good red. Right. Um, I like white too. It just depends on my mood. But um, I don't think you like good wine, actually. Whatever. I love wine. Yeah. <laughs> and I like, you just I, said I, I like rose, I like red, and I really like wine. <laughs> <laughs> It just depends on, you know, mood, um, where you are, the weather, everything. But I, I do love I do love a good rosé, but I do love yeah. a good, rich red. Too. Yeah. Well, yeah. it all depends. We find that we drink wines whatever the season calls for it. So if it's warm out, we're drinking rosés or white wines, Chardonnays, Sauvignon Blancs, Pinot Grigios. Yeah. If it's cold out, we're drinking more red wines. It's amazing how your brain just kind of kicks into those. Tonight styles. we're drinking both. Tonight we're drinking both. Yeah. Yes, Yay! I'm an opportunity wine enthusiast. Yeah. <laughs> um, Nick actually added to my uh, four S's. He said, don't forget about the final three S's, stagger, stumble, and sleep. Oh. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll all, actually, we should have Nick in as a guest one of these days. He's a <laughs> rock star. This guy worked for, he was a trainer. And Nick, I'm sorry if I get this wrong, but he was a top trainer for one of the best uh, major league baseball teams in the world. And um, I'm forgetting the name of him right now. And he's retired now in Arizona, but this guy lived the national, um, I mean, the major league baseball. I don't know. I don't want to say yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember. But, you know. Sorry. Yeah. It wasn't uh, the Yankees though, Nick. So next time, next <laughs> in your next life, you come back. No, that ain't right. That you ain't reincarnate right. as the trainer for the Yankees, Nick. All right. <laughs> He's obsessed with the Yankees. <laughs> oh, Royals. Nick just said the Royals. Royals. There you go. Thanks, Nick. Kansas City Royals. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, Shannon, it was our pleasure having you on. It was so awesome. Much. It was great. Yeah. Lovely to be included. And um, let's put up um, Shannon's. Uh, yeah, you get 20, 25% off uh, Shannon's jewelry if you go to her site. There you go. Um, and is it if you buy before Monday? Yeah, until Sunday. Well, mi midnight on Sunday. So midnight on Sunday. Just buy it now. So yeah, just buy it. Um, <laughs> I got to say, I, you know, I'm just such a fan of, of what you do. I, I love who you are. Um, I, I love the, the spirit behind your jewelry. Mm -hmm. And that's that's why uh, I've just been so drawn to it. So I, it's cool. I, I like we've all come through something, we've all been through something, and at some point, you know, we will all go through something. So it's just, you know, part of life. It's it's the first time that Mindy and I, you know, because jewelry and you know, with guys, we don't wear a lot of jewelry unless you're a rock star, which is what the point oh oh one percent of it. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's the first time that Mindy's ever really been into a jewelry or fashion designer, and that I absolutely love everything you do as well. I mean, Thank I'm like. I'd wear the stuff that she's putting on, and and I would, she would wear the guy yeah, stuff. My husband is from Philly, and he is a guy's guy, and he has my rings now on, and my necklaces, and he's like, I lost my necklace broke. You have to make another one. I'm like, okay, like he's he's, he's it. I love that men like it. it it's who, cool. Who, who is that? Did you my say? Husband. I'm sorry. My husband is oh, um, oh, awesome. Yeah, he never wore jewelry before, and now he's like, I I get yeah. stuff everywhere. People love it. He goes, I. I have to have it on. Okay. He's a good model for you. He, yeah, he's awesome. And we need to do a male. We need to do a men's jewelry, you know, something. Yeah, yeah, men's jewelry week. People unite because you you got a little going on here. You could just you yeah, know. That's like a couple, couple of games. Jacking up my game. I get a lot of men now asking. I just want a couple bracelets. I just want like they want a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But then yeah, it just keeps going. So, so thank you for being there with us. Of course. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Cheers. thank you for uh, thank you for coming on with us. And, uh, we'll have you back at some point, but uh, you know we'll do more. Wait, um, her glass is empty. <laughs>
What? That's, that's, a no. <laughs> that's heresy. Wine's good, isn't it? It's really good. I know. But by the way, Washington, Washington residents saying California wine's good. I don't know. We have it on tape. We have it on tape. I'm just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, go check out Shannon's jewelry at her website. Uh, get 25% off if you're going to buy something, which is pretty cool. And aren't we doing a special? We're doing a 20% off, right? Yes, we are. So um, we're doing 20% yeah. off. Um, oops. Uh, so you only know about this if you join us for the tastings. So yeah. thanks for coming for the tastings. Yeah. Uh, we just love spending time with you. This makes my Saturday totally. And the most important part, join the wine and music party. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Reservetastings.com. So, so um, we're going to say goodbye to Shannon right now, and we're going to say goodbye to everybody else. Okay? Bye, Shannon. Bye. We love you. Thank you for being here with us. And uh, bye to all you guys. We love you. We'll see you Tuesday, um, Tuesday evening, 5 p.m. Pacific time uh, in the backyard. Peter White's coming back over. Yep. So um, we'll okay. be playing. We'll I'm be gonna, playing some cool stuff. I'm going to put you on the spot right now. Yeah. We have still a bunch of people that hang with us, hung with us, hang with us. <laughs> You can't even speak here. <laughs> have hung with us this long. What? Would you play something else for the very nice people that have what? all been here with us? What do you want to hear? I don't know. I Anybody played, have a song request? I played Aerosmith. Anybody have a song request? I played Pretty Good for a Girl. Right, right, right. <laughs> Anybody have a song request? Mm -hmm. Oh, we'll just picking up the saxophone. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Uh, let's, let's, uh, anybody have a song request? Thanks for the night. Yeah, we got some nice, uh, we said goodbye. I know, I know that. But I know, I was like, what are you doing? I'm just gonna railroad you and say, do you any have a, do you have a song request, honey? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. I want you to play Rock Modernoffs. You are so <laughs> fired. So fired. Uh, we, we have, oh, we have a couple. I'll, I'll be your home. Ah, uh, stars. Ah, oh, I played that on piano the uh, other night, yeah. right? Ah, uh, see, that's so cool. Uh, well, how about okay, Cheryl? So. Cheryl is uh is our neighbor, and uh, so Cheryl, yeah. I gotta be uh. uh well, it's piano, right? I'll be your home is more piano. Well, uh, I'll be your home is a uh, is a vocal song. Yeah, it's a song yeah. that I wrote with Davey Aiden and and uh, Candace Devine and. That was on my Wild Heart CD, and I love that song. So I don't have my piano um, here, but um, we got a couple. We got a Charlie Parker, by the way. Ty is calling you out. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Ty is asking for Charlie Parker. Yeah, we'll talk to you later. You're right? a jerk. Yeah. You're a jerk. <laughs> no, we had a couple joints. We had a. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay, that's all I'm back <laughs> That's all I can remember. We have a Lucy's. We have a couple Lucy's and a couple joints. So <laughs> how about we take... Uh, uh, hold Lil on, I'm going to take Cheryl for a second. All right, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Cheryl... Hold on, I need Which Patterson. One? Cheryl Patterson. Okay, sorry. If you've lost your way... Boom, 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 boom. Know that <laughs> I'm here to stay. And you just reach out your hand. I'll always stand by you. You don't get to sing. I know. Ty doesn't like that. And when you're down and out, oh, no. you've been left high and dry. Now you just call out my name. There ain't no shame in crying. Now we're getting to the good stuff now. I, I, I'm not oh. allowed. I'll always be by your side. Can I sing back up? We'll walk the winding road. Maybe. And I'll, I'll bear be your heavy load. load. And, and I'll, I'll be, be your home. home. Oh, yes, I will. And in the darkness of night, you'll you never be on your own. own. Oh, you don't have to go it alone. Cause I'll be your home. Oh, yes, I will. Was I in key? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Was I in key? Love is so, telling the truth. Isn't it amazing? Like when you sit in your car <laughs> and Phil Collins is on, you sound just like Phil Collins. But when you actually do it, uh, thanks, Nick. But when you do it live, it just never sounds like Phil Collins. So okay, Mark. I'll leave that up to uh, Mindy's. Mark, uh, you're asking for a song that I haven't <laughs> played in all these shelter in place 
uh, you know, I've done hundreds of songs over the past, whatever, 17 times that we've done this one? these. And you ask for it, it just happens that way. Okay. And I was, uh, I was talking to John Taylor um, from Duran Duran. John's a friend and he co-wrote that song with me. He is one of the most amazing bass players on the planet. You guys know him from Duran Duran. You know him from being the, you know, amazing looking guy on stage and, and playing those songs and writing those songs. But I mean, as a bass player and musician and writer, he's just, he's just a genius. And, uh, you know, so I was thinking, you know, wow, I haven't played our song. It just happens that way, which is the title track to my very first record. Uh, but I need John. So uh, I was going to try and figure out a way to, you know, get him close to the same yard uh, so that we could get him in the fire pit, you know. Yeah. But I'll play you just a little bit of it. Uh, go to that camera right there. No. Right. Oh, yeah. I'll just play a little bit. Go to the Mindy cam. There you go. <laughs> now I got to remember. Hold on. What key was it in? Oh, really? <laughs> that sounds right. <laughs> John over and it's bass and sax and it's so cool. So thank you for that request because I never play that song live anymore and I miss it. And I was just thinking about it. So you just, you know, you brought it out of my brain. <laughs> well, I think, is it time for us to go? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Let you guys get, have your uh, Saturday evening and uh, are we still on this? Hi. Let me change it. Um, I'll get you Let there. you guys have your Saturday evening. We'll go to the Mindy and Eric camp. And, there you uh, go. It's it's all so uh, yeah. so cool to have two cameras on our table, <laughs> um, but we just thank you for coming and hanging out with us and yeah. checking out Shannon's jewelry and and uh, drinking some wine and uh, you know playing some music. So uh, we hope you have a great Saturday. We would have stayed here for three hours with you guys. But I know. nobody wants that. So. We do. Yeah, we do. I do. Yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> we love you guys. Thank you so much for hanging with us. Putting up with us, I guess, right? Yeah, well, you yeah. know, this I get what... sprayed with champagne every once in a while. <laughs> Hopefully that won't happen all the time. But, you know, yeah, tonight every, was every night. Safe. Every night we go to bed, I say to Smitty, thanks for putting up with me today. Thank you for... <laughs> You're insane. Yeah. All right. Cheers to you guys. We'll see you Tuesday for more. And uh, we'll come up with another cool wine tasting and music. And who knows what else next time? Because this is fun. Tuesday night. P. White in the house. P.D. White. That sounds not very cool when I say it, but P. White's in the house. <laughs> and then we'll do another wine and music tasting with a special guest in a couple of weeks, everybody. So thanks, everybody. Cheers. For today, fortune favors the bold. Yes. Cheers. 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 Mm. cheers, cheers. <laughs>